Welcome to Pokemon Masters Console podcast episode. I never know what. 25? 26? Uh, no. No, it's definitely got to be more than that. You talk to the people. I'm going to find out. And uh, we need a little gavel, so like when we count yeah. the session. Yeah. So, uh, today we are on the cusp. We are Today is the official launch day here in America. Uh, we're recording, you know. Oh, dude, I think you were right. It's 25. 25? 25. Did you say 25? Yeah, you? I said 25 or 26. Oops, my bad. Episode <laughs> 25. I thought we were in like the 30s. Okay. Astral Radiance, bro. Let's go, dude. So we're going to jump right in and spoil a little bit because it was sort of unexpected. But uh, we've actually already been dabbling with Astral Radiance for the past 24 hours because it came out on PTCGO. Yeah. On Wednesday. Yeah. So, if you're watching this, you know, this podcast is coming out on Friday. That's the official release day of, like, all the physical cards. Like, you can go to Target or whatever and buy the mm-hmm. cards now, which... Don't tempt <laughs> me, bro. Don't tempt me, dude, because I will. Because you know I will. Yeah, he needs dude. more cards! No, no, dude. No, I don't. I don't. You know, it's funny. I pulled... I got, like... I like the Jolteon you pulled. I have that in the online. I got a bunch of packs, and these were all of my pulls. This is beautiful. So for people that are just listening to the podcast, this is the um, uh, it, it's the, the it's trainer a, gallery. Yeah, the trainer gallery. Uh, w- uh, Gary, Gary and Jolteon. It's or the blue. Th- it's, yeah, his, blue. His name is blue. It's the thunderous awakening Jolteon. It's the full art, super super sexy. Obviously, you put the memory capsule on, and then it turns off all of those stinking shady dealings. Yep, and then I got uh, promo art Bolton V. Which Pretty we cool. love that. He's got his tongue out. and Ollie himself, the Bolton dog himself, is upstairs sleeping. Yeah, so. he is. So, yeah, there's my uh, Jolteon. I like the sleeves, too. Show the sleeves. Oh, yeah. Got the uh, the Vivid Voltage EBT. Beautiful, beautiful. Canto rep here. So, uh, Justin, before we talk about. So, yeah, all the main of the topic Pokemon. of today will be yeah, Astro yeah. Radiance. Exactly, yep. I guess we should preface. Yeah, we will be talking Astro Radiance. We're going to talk about what cards we think are going to help shift the meta. We've already done some buying. We've already we done some pack opening. Yes. It was one of the greatest pack openings ever. I guess we just... Yeah, Justin... Oh, man, that was so fun. Justin popped off. I I opened. I watched him open a bunch of packs on PTCGO, and I wish we recorded it because... It was crazy. He, he popped off so I pulled hard. a gold Palkia. Yeah. V Star, which is worth forty to forty one packs in trading. I traded away for forty. So basically I got almost another full thirty three percent. And then you pulled two Dialga, Dialga V stars and traded did you trade both of those? Both of those away for eight each. Yeah, so that was you so you got over fifty packs. It was, it, for people that might be wondering why I'm trading away these cards, it's just because at the moment those aren't the decks that we were going for. We had specific yeah. things for the channel that we wanted to build. We actually had three decks each that we're working towards, and I was already able to finish a rough draft of two out of my three just from the first day of biting and trading because I got all of these good cards and I just traded them away because I wasn't building towards the Palkia, and pa- and I don't care about the gold. When I see that gold, I'm like. Free money, baby. Let's exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah, dude. Free money. Yeah, because it's like with the with the everything that you pulled, like the sheer amount of packs that you opened and all of the stuff crazy. you pulled. You basically have a playset of every trainer card in there. Yes. And like, for instance, I have seventeen Gardenia's Vigor, which we'll talk about. So yeah. like now, everyone in the PMC has four for me, four for him, four for Doug, mm-hmm. four for the kid, four for the neighbor, We're four for the dog. Him. Like everyone's got some Gardenias now. So like. But and and it was so. Let's talk about what happened. So we were super like kind of bumming, right? Let's be honest. Yeah. We were sort of. I was definitely bummed. My bubble was officially popped, right? Yeah. Because we had seen we'd been window shopping, super hype. Oh, it's coming out! And we were looking on uh, Po Town store. Po Town and Card Cavern, I believe. And Card Cavern stuff, and it looked like the price was going to be like eighty nine cents a pack, and like forty four dollars for fifty. Mm-hmm. Which, do the math, just to get a hundo would be like almost a hundred. It's like ninety something dollars for fake cards. For for, it's just not worth it. Right. It's just totally not worth it. That's not the efficient price that we're looking for when we're doing our online just that's not what our hobby is about for us personally yeah considering you could get a hundred vivid voltage packs for like seven bucks yeah exactly it's a big difference yeah it is. so um then uh, so we thought it was coming out friday 
Mm-hmm. He had, you have a whole bunch of coin safes. You can buy 50 packs. 10,000. 10,000 coins. You can buy 50 packs of Astro Radiance tomorrow as soon as they're live, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, they're all going to be trade locked, but you still get to, that's so much money you're saving. Yeah. That's basically. I, I saved myself 30 to 40 bucks. Right? Exactly. So, long story short, right now on Card Cabin, they're actually like 69 cents. And then on Poton, they were like 75. And it was like 37 for. Um, a bulk 50. For a bulk 50. So I ended up buying in there. I bought 115 total. I was like, you know what? That's actually a lot better price for what I'm looking for. Uh, Brandon was at a concert, so he was sort of, uh, he was taking a nap. Yes. So in the meantime, I just used those extra 15 to start the trading, and I actually got my Lilligans and stuff that I wanted. Really, really great. So the fact that it dropped a couple days early, it was my day off, mm-hmm. able to do all my trading and shopping the I pulls, need to. Got pulls so were, much good pulls. Pulls were insane. It was a really great day. So overall, that's kind of how our uh, week went. And I'm going to kick it over to you. And uh, over in disc golf land, you've been hobbying a little bit in your I, other hobby. I have been hobbying. I'm actually kind of on cloud nine in, in my disc golf hobby land. As you can see, I'm repping the... Team Disc Baron. Yeah, buddy. Uh, head over to Disc Baron for all of your disc golf needs. Use code 71353 at checkout for a little little money off of your order. Um, yeah, I had a tournament. Uh, it was... L- two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Yeah, it was It was like the day after the last podcast. Yeah, yeah, it was that weekend. Yeah. Um, and I was going into this tournament, and big pressure on me in this tournament because it cost a lot of money to get in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was on a course I'm very familiar with that I play all the time, and uh, we had there were they were giving away um, basically playoff berths or um, berths to the state championships here in Michigan. You can't just sign up for the Michigan Disc Golf State Championships. You have to earn your way in. So yep. I needed a top three finish in my field, and and I got third place. Woo! Let's go! So, basically what that means is you're officially in. You have your golden ticket. I do. You're going to Wonka World, right? I am. I'm going to Frisbee Wonka World, Michigan Frisbee Wonka World. I uh, Going into the tournament, actually, um, I don't know what happened. The day before, I decided to go out to the field and throw a little bit in practice. And I just, like, lost command of the disc. It, like, wasn't... No, it wasn't clicking for me, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was really worried that I was going to this huge tournament the next day. And then even in the morning when I was practicing, like... Got those butterflies. It was bad. And then I just kind of... I stuck to my game plan. I just stuck with it. And I stayed confident. Turned off my brain. I was actually in 10th place after the first round. And you worked your way all the way up to third. Yeah. Because we have live scoring. Yeah. Um. So, like, as I finish a hole, that score gets entered into, like, a database. Mm-hmm. A live database. So I was watching in the second round. I was watching the people in front of me who were faltering, like there were Ooh. people. Exactly, you see him trip up, and you're like, "Oh, yeah. wait a minute! I got an opening yep. here." I walked onto the hardest hole in the course, insane, insanely hard. Let's uh, hole. go! And I'm sitting in like fifth place. I'm like, and everyone who was in front of, who was mm-hmm. ahead of me in place, was playing behind me. It's kind of weird how that works. Yeah. So I was like, okay, if I can get through this hard, really hard hole, take a par, all these guys behind me. The, you just set the bar really high. I did. So I I parred that hole. Oh! I, so now you look back like, all right. Yep. And I, I, literally, I literally watched those guys in front of me. I was watching them. I was like, okay, this guy just took a bogey. That guy just took a double. And then I continued miss, to do that. For miss, the, miss, miss. I continued to do that for the rest of the round. Oh, boy. Let's go. Cheers to that. Congratulations, brother. That's yep. so awesome. So, so when in. So when, um, when would State... To be, I'm assuming in 2022 still. Yeah, it's Labor Day weekend. Oh, okay. It's End of three the days. So I'd have one round every day for so, Friday, so for Saturday, people, and Sunday. People that aren't aware, maybe around the world. Uh, that'll be the end of August, beginning of September, kind of. First weekend in September. First yeah. weekend of September. It's like the first few days of September. Yeah. So, so beautiful weather. Oh, it's always good. Oh, it's September's awesome. a gorgeous time of year for in Michigan. Yep. Yeah. So that's what's going on with me, man. You had some pretty fun stuff going on over the weekend. Yeah, so it's a little bit uh, a, a, another adjacent topic, but basically over this past weekend over in Prague, the Czech Republic, we had the AOS World Championship. So obviously for people that um, have been a fan of the channel know that I also play Warhammer, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So the Age of Sigmar World Championships were in Prague. Uh, the... Honest Wargamer crew flew out there. The T-Sports Network, they streamed it on Twitch. You can go subscribe. I think it's like $4.99 a month and watch 
all of the games for, throughout the whole weekend, both from the singles bracket and the doubles. So obviously, for people that don't know, uh, the doubles is sort of like our... That's our world champ. That's like our. That's the. the that's the, like the format, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of like, oh, because there's, it, it takes so long to finish a game. It's like yeah. two, three hours to to play Warhammer. Um, it it's not practical to get through like a full bracket and find a true winner. Yeah, in, yeah. It's really yeah. hard. You'd have to be there for weeks to do it because a game can go for like an hour or more. It's two, three. It's hours. about three. It's three hours per round in a it tournament. Can, okay, yeah. See, so that, that's it's, insane. It's a lot. So yeah. normally, in, in in like the singles, it was uh, they do like three on Saturday and mm-hmm. two on Sunday, or three Saturday, three Sunday. Some of them, but usually they're five round tournaments. So what it was here, they had the singles. Super cool. It was a lot of good coverage. I got a lot of my. Uh, laundry and cleaning and stuff done while it was on. It was awesome. Got a lot yes, of more stuff done. Um, and then the doubles was so uh, it was excuse me not the doubles the teams, um, the team format. So basically it was teams of eight from all over the world. There was uh, it was spoiler alert. It ended up being taken out. Uh, the winners was Team England. So Aww. congratulations to Team England. Congrats, congrats. Nice work. They uh, always put up a good show. They're always one of, if not the best team in the world. It's so, not really a surprise here. So are you um, are you, you Team USA all day? Uh, you know, it. W- I don't really care that much. I was just more, I really like the coverage. Okay. And I love learning about the game. Because, like, being able to watch this game, because it's, like it's, it's a complicated game to play. So being able to just watch hours of, like, professional, you know, air quotes, professional coverage of, of really good players and, like, Rob and, and um, everybody over at the TSN, they, they really know their stuff. So it's it's really really good. It's like listening to like a really entertaining British encyclopedia oh, okay. on this game. So I'm just like <laughs> learning so much. I'm like, "Oh, cuz like there's like 26 different factions that you can play in Warhammer." Right. So for me, I'm like, "Okay, I got my dwarves. What do I do if I come up against faction L?" Right. I've never played faction L. Nobody in my Local meta has that, but I've watched a bunch of stuff, so maybe I learned that way. Of, oh, okay, I know what to do here. So it's like when you netlist a deck, sort and you're of, like, yep. how does it beat me of VMAX? Well, you could like go to, you know, say Tricky Gym or or Zapdos TCG and watch them navigate that matchup. Exactly, but. exactly. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was really good coverage. Uh, I would recommend everybody go. Uh, who is interested would go check that out. Uh, links will be in the description, obviously. So that's pretty. It was pretty uh, exciting. It was. It was a lot of Warhammer coverage. It was. It looked like a lot of fun. So basically, what it does in the team format, um, I we have a little bit of like a segue here because it does kind of work like Pokemon. Yeah, I was kind of like loosely making that comparison when you said that like doubles was kind of the format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, like um, in 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 the team format, there they were teams of eight. So there were eight players, and then they had like a couple coaches and stuff like that. Um, it was actually really funny. There was one of the, like, the jokes of the weekend was that m- a couple of teams from like I think Switzerland and a couple different European teams, like Team France, they had like a caddy. So like you remember the girl, oh, remember the lady yeah. from the Harry Potter? Anything from the trolley, dear? Yeah. They had like a little caddy with like a snack cart and waters and beers and stuff. So like for every team or like no for just like their, the venue. Like team Team France brought their own caddy. Oh my gosh! So it's like so a couple of teams did that where they where one of the crew they brought was like a water boy snack so, car boy. So Team England. Own. So Team England's like they're like they, they're they, sweating they, over there dying, and t- Team France is just sipping back margaritas like it's no, t- dude, dude. So like Team England is like you know they they finish a round and like oh, all right I need some brain food. They're like. Bring me some crumpets. Exactly. Bring me some tea. Yep. Yeah. And then and then Team USA had like brats and beers and stuff like that. <laughs> it was really funny. One of the guys on the Team USA uh, team, super good player. Uh, his name is Jay Noah Singh, and um, he's just like this. He was playing as the Florida man for the week, so he was dressed oh. up. He was dressed up <laughs> at, in like a full. Red, white, and blue uh, American flag, like onesie leotard. It was like shorts and a, and a oh, like you dude. see down. And his whole army, so like he was playing Iron Jaws, it was a bunch of orcs, and they were riding like big, giant, like boars, giant pigs, like the size of a bear, mm-hmm. right? 
and all scattered around the base was basically like they were running through like a redneck trailer park of Florida. So there was like little beer cans and cigarette really? butts. And oh, dude, that's so So awesome. he was playing the full Florida man. He's not from Florida. He, wow, he's from dude. like up in New York or something. He should have. What do you It was York? so good. It was so funny. He should have made. So you said it was orcs? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he should have painted one like Trump and then like oh, had like bald eagles like. No, did, he, he did. He have any flying? Uh, yeah. Models? The, so there was a there's like a big dragon, bulldog dragon looking thing that he ride, and he had that, and they they basically put like war, the orcs put war paint on it, and it was red, white, and blue like stars. Oh, uh, dude, he should have done like all the presidents, dude, like <coughs> Abe Lincoln and that's like so George funny. Washington and stuff like that. Yeah, that's actually pretty awesome. It was super funny, but yeah, there was there was a couple of uh, so basically how the matchups work. Um, it, it, that's this is the part that makes it very Pokemon like mm -hmm. and very interesting. Once we were talking about, it, we we're like, "Wow, that's a really cool format." I'm like, "Yeah, see." Yeah, yeah. So basically, there's a pairings system. So for people that have watched the channel and have listened to us talk about Unite, you'll know that we really hope that someday we get a draft mode. This is essentially draft mode, a pick and ban system, so to speak. For Warhammer, so there are certain matchups in Warhammer. Like I said, there's about 26 different factions you can play. Mm -hmm. I play dwarves. I own three different. There are three dwarf factions. I own them all. That's sort of my shtick. I'm the dwarf guy because yep. I'm short in real life, right? Um, so I own basically. I play three out of 26. Okay. Um, and it's sort of like the typings, the 17 whatever typings in Pokemon, where certain matchups, certain whatever is weak or resistant, vice versa, right? Yeah. Like uh, electric to water type of thing. Yeah. So there are very much those polarized rock, paper, scissors sort of matchups that could occur, whether it be terrain or the scenario or all sorts of details, right? The point is, is that... The when you when you break it down and get really into the game, there's there could be some rock paper scissor elements. So then basically the the team captains would sit down. So like let's say it's Brandon versus Justin. We're on the opposite teams, right? And we're at this pairing system. So basically you have a a deck of cards, and on the cards is basically just like the symbol of all your dudes' different armies. We can't take the same armies. There's restrictions and blah blah blah. Okay, yeah. But so it could be like. Imagine if this is Pokemon, it could be like, okay, so we have, like, the Arceus deck. And then we have, like, the the Mew VMAX. Mm -hmm. And then over here we got the Gengar. Justin's running Lilligant. Brandon's yep. running Palkia, Starmie. Yep. Stuff like that, right? And we all have our, our decks that we've brought, so to speak, right? Let's put it into TCG forms because we're doing Astral Radiance, yeah, right? Yeah, there you go. Um, and then maybe we've even got a Charizard in here. Right. To go against their Lily Gant type of stuff. Right? And then we've also got, you know, maybe we've got a Samurott. All sorts of different typings. You see my point, yeah. right? Yep. Warhammer is the same way. So basically you start and you put up a Defender card and it's like face down. And, you, and so for like us in, in Pokemon, we put out like a really strong Arceus deck that can just beat... Or that can just... is comfortable going against anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's sort of that first Defender... And then the enemy, the you would put up, you would have two that you could play and pick one and go into that. So you choose oh, which one goes into that. Okay. And then I get two. One okay. goes in, and then you get two, and it goes back and forth sort of that way. And it allows you to get pairings and matchups that you want. So, like, you might need to wait to draw out that grass deck because you know that you have the Charizard. Yeah. deck yeah. for the matchup to get it in and basically what it does is it allows so if over all eight games the whole team it's how many points you can score there's a bunch of details to it to how you score points but the point is how many points you score as a team so like the max you get was 120 the minimum was 40 so in pokemon terms if you six owed me it would be Brandon 120, Justin 40. That means I got the bare minimum, because like you hit 40 just for showing up sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And you got the 120, which means you maxed out. You capped me. You 6 owed me. Uh-huh. And then it plays from there. So, But maybe there's a match where you and I had a game where it's like you only 3 owed me. I So in those losing matchups where maybe you're the grass deck and I'm the fire deck, I'm going to win. Yes. Nine times out of ten, yep. right? Yep. In this, there was... There, because there's a point system on the team, even if you're in a losing matchup where you're the grass into fire, 
so to speak, you still have a job to do to your team to deny that fire player as many points and lose as least amount as possible. Lose right, gracefully, right. so to so speak. It's like, so it's like if me, you, and Doug all go to a tournament with a deck, I bring one, you bring another, and Doug brings one. Say you lose your matchup and me and Doug win, but if you know, but you you're still gaining the team points. I, yeah, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't lose forty to one twenty. Maybe it was like an eighty-seven ninety something. Maybe yeah. it was a close game, and yep. I scored some points for the team, which means in the overall bracket, our team did better because maybe somebody else got stomped. Right, right. So it was really interesting to see that type of matchups, and that's like that's why it's like the premier uh, in terms of like. To really see like a world championship, it was the team thing. That's why that's the format. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of cool. Instead of just watching like oddball matchups and singles and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah, because yeah. You, it, there's a lot of RNG. Right. If you get randomly paired up and you know where it's a grass and it's a singles, now yeah. you went four and one instead of five and zero. Oh. Yeah, I get the mono mono grass team against the mono fire team. It's like, well, we know who's gonna win. We that know matchup. who's gonna win this yeah. one. But yeah, so, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, I'd say. Uh, so speaking of tournaments, I guess we could transition now into the official Pokemon stuff. Yeah, uh, Syracuse. Yeah, Secaucus. Secaucus. So we had Secaucus regionals over the weekend, dude. There's a regional. Oh, the there's a dude. Dude, tournaments are going crazy right now. We got Vancouver happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're just gonna dive right in. We're gonna talk about VGC first. We're gonna talk about yeah. some of the teams, what the meta looks like, um, and we're gonna talk about the winners. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna talk VGC first, and then we're gonna talk about TCG. We're gonna come down here and look at the teams a little bit. Hey, wouldn't you know it? There's a Zacian in first place. Zacian wins again. So we have Zacian, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Incineroar. Gastron, Rillaboom, and Thunderous. Pretty cool team. Yeah. Um, I, w- I like I like the second place team. Yeah, I like Alex's team. He's got the Alcremie, yeah, he's got the Gothitelle, yeah. the Shadow Tag, and then a lot of this kind of standard, you know, yeah, Incineroar, double fake outs. Yep. yep. And he's running, obviously, the Ice Horse. You're a big fan of that. Yep. We got Glick here, third. Wolfie. Which is a Lunala. really interesting team. Lunala in a Sun. Yeah, yeah. You know, we are talking off. Um, we were talking off camera about whether where Cybertron might have been. I actually, I I think he was commentating, right? I thought he was commentating, but now I'm thinking back. He was playing. He oh, did was play. He? he did play because I watched his game against uh, Joe UX Nine. Very high. Well, he's not in the top thirty-two. Okay. But yeah, I watched him play against uh, Joe UX Nine and. Uh, mm-hmm. In game one, Cybertron was smoking him, but then this guy, the Veltal, oh. came in and called out his uh, sword stance on his Groudon and hit him with a foul play. Oh, no. From what he Veltal. Yeah, dude, with You're Dark done. Aura. Yeah, done. yeah, it was a one-hit KO, dude. Look at all those Zacians. Wow. Yeah, so what I find interesting, what I wanted to talk about when I'm looking at these teams, when I saw that Alcremi and... Gothitelle Gothitelle. had made the finals, I thought maybe we were seeing some sort of shift in the meta. Uh, I thought maybe this was the time. The only shift I feel like we're seeing is um, the top shelf players are making it to good positions with weird teams. Like like Glick. Wolfie Glick. He made it with a Lunala. Mm Mm-hmm. Like when and you, that just shows how good he is. Exactly. And then like you've got a Veltal from Joe UX9. Uh, I'm not sure. What did Charge and Pang bring? He's on here somewhere. He's right here. There he is. Zacian, oh no, he's brought he over. Brought he brought he brought meta. Yeah. But like you're seeing a lot of the top players make it with some meta picks, but at the end of the day, Zacian is still taking the crown. Mm-hmm. It's it's kinda interesting because this is not a weather team. No. But uh Really fast offensive team. I would say the the biggest change we're seeing in the meta right now is we're seeing a more usage of Calyrex than we have before. Like we're seeing both forms of Calyrex mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are really like they're starting to come into their own. Yeah, they yeah they are. Um, 
But yeah, for like other teams we got here, lots of horses. There's lots of horses and there's lots of dogs. Like here's one. Look at those teams. Oh my god, yeah. Look, look at them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in a row. Seven swordfish teams. They all have Incineroar. Oh no, this one doesn't. Nice. Well, we yeah. said the Lando. Oh yeah, actually, I actually like Lando. that team though. I would yeah, talk I, about I like, that. Yeah, this one's a lot more interesting than because these are the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Almost all these are exact same. Yep. I like this. I think this is offensive Zappos, Zappos here. That's our here pick. Here 15th, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Geet. Yep. Yeah, it's really interesting. It was a it was a good match. Uh, congratulations, obviously. Um, VGC is kicking off. Worlds is going to be coming up soon. So we're just uh, we're getting ready. Yeah. I really I really want to see Venusaur, man. Where like, Where's the Venusaur? Yeah, what well, happened to the Venus? There's a couple down there. The first Venus Eight appearance is eighth place. Yep. It's only a matter of time, dude. He's there, though. He's in the top ten. That's yep. still good placement. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, it'll be actually be interesting to see. Um, I'm kind of excited for ninth gen VGC, honestly. Oh, yeah. Like, ninth gen is going to be when everything gets flipped on its head and we can actually kind of breathe again and restart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because do you think uh, you think weather will be as prevalent, prevalent without Dynamax? I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, it depends on what new abilities and what the Pokedex looks like. And there's been rumors that this could be like a fifth gen, mm-hmm. where it's only uh, ninth gen pokes in the Pokedex until you finish the game. Yeah. So if that's the case, then weather won't be around at all, uh, depending on who gets in the national decks after that. Because the series nine, uh, weather the weather teams were not the best teams. No, they were around, but they weren't the best. Yeah. They were definitely meta. Like, you saw a lot of Venusaur and Charizard and Torkoals. And, yeah, they were Because the biggest difference between now and Series 9 is the Pokemon that bring the weather, Groudon... Are super powerful stat-wise. A lot better than Torkoal. Yeah. Pretty much. Torkoal's great, but he's not a... No, he's not Groudon. He's not restricted. And, like, Kyogre, you know, like... Kyogre just slaps everyone. Well, the difference between Kyogre... And Pelipper. And Pelipper and Polytoad. Polytoad, yeah, exactly. (laughs) You see the difference here. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm always a fan of weather, so I'm going to try it. But, yeah, it just depends. Really excited to see 9th Gen. Me too, because... That's sort of where we're at with VGC, but there's not a whole lot more to say. It is interesting to see that people are trying new stuff, but at the end of the day, yes. Doggo wins. Dog act. Has the dog won? The dog has won every regional. Everything. I'm pretty sure he's won every regional since... Since we started paying attention. Yeah. Since well, Series 12. Yeah. So, but, so yeah, let's move on to the other side of this coin. Yeah, let's talk about the TCG side of things. So we do have top 64? 55, yes. that's 55. a weird number. Um, for the Secaucus regionals on the TCG side, we've got... Secaucus, New Jersey. Secaucus. we All got right. Luke, Luke Smith. Smith. Coming Very in. Very nice deck. Yep, coming in with just a uh, Sharon's Care Arceus V-Star deck. A 4-2 line of Arceus V-Star. Yeah, this is pretty much like the boogeyman in the meta. Yeah, this is. is the Zacian, sort of, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really, really good. Obviously, Sharon's care being able to uh, heal up all that damage from a, from any normal type. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah, I'm not because I've played against this. Yeah. I'm glad that Acerola is not in standard. Correct, because it's a legit powerhouse move. Yeah, it is. Because I, I have, I because I've played an expanded and I've, mm-hmm. um, I've had like a Va- Vaporeon V on the bench and then a V Star in the act or V Max in the active. Mm-hmm. I, I take any damage. I'll just, I'll just Acerola that uh, Vaporeon V Max. Put the other one in the active and then it's just like boom. Yeah, it is interesting. He's running the Zamazenta V. With the Regal Sands. Ooh. See, now there's the sauce. Which is what we've been running in our Lucario deck. And that he's also running a couple Metal Energy in case he needs to swing. Because he actually does more damage than more prizes your opponent has. So I think this card... It's good. ...is underplayed. It's super I, I good. I think this card is really, really underplayed. Mm-hmm. Like, put it, finding room for it in your deck on top of... Like, over things like Crobat and Barrel is hard. Mm-hmm. But this is such a good early game card. And it's really nice to see the Dunsparce come in, obviously with the Beaver Fever. Yeah. 
Do you think Dunsparce giving your Arceus no uh, weakness? No weakness. Uh, so do you think? Do you think Zamazenta V will see a lot of play when Jubilee Village comes out? Uh, I I don't know. It's interesting because basically this is like a professor's research. You discard your hand and then draw five, and then your turn ends. Right. And Jubilee Village, you draw is like a Beaver Fever, but it tur- you draw up to five. And then your turn ends. And then your turn ends. Mm, yeah, that is pretty interesting. I'm... I like Zamazenta V. Yeah, I do. I So I own a bunch of Zamazenta V, and I pulled a bunch of Jubilee Village. So we're going to be testing, for yeah. sure. And then it's another thing with like Jubilee Village is like, do you dare run that over like... Beaver. Because well, Beaver doesn't end your turn. Well, and then compare it to other stadiums. Like, are you really going to run that over Path to the Peak? Are you or really going to run Sinnoh. that over Temple of Sinnoh? Oh, which, we'll get to the yeah, Temple. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to. We are going to talk about some cards. Um, I've already actually practiced with it, and it's really good. Yeah, would like would you run it over? Uh, Mag- you wouldn't run it over like Magma Basin nope. or anything like that, nope, or Training Core. Yep, if that's your engine, you definitely need it. Yeah. So yeah, this I kind of like this deck. It's kind of like another little toolbox. I love the inclusion of Hoopa. Uh, Hoopa covers a lot a of lot. stuff, like because it's psychic and dark, so it hits so much in the meta for super effective. Would you think about? Um, and that's the only thing it's there for is the super effective trades. I think you know the, the only thing this deck is missing when you compare it to other um, decks of this nature is it doesn't have a fighting type Pokemon. But I think. I think he's just willing to go with the Arceus for Arceus trade. Correct. You know, mm-hmm. which it, which you know is not all that bad as long as you're getting off one Trinity charge. Well, and again, he's got the Zamazenta, so even if the other dude gets a couple of prizes, it doesn't matter how many prizes you've taken. It's not how many more they have than you. It's just if for each prize card they've taken, the Zamazenta powers up. You know, and another thing that I find really interesting about these top tier decks is how much path to the peak they run. When they run such an ability heavy team, like we've got an uh, we've got Zamazenta has an ability, Hoopa has an ability, Crobat and Arceus all have abilities that basically are the reason that they function. He's running three paths to the peak. Yeah, I wonder how that's supposed to work. Yeah, uh, you just I, you just got to navigate it like expertly, I would imagine. Yeah, that's really interesting. So we'll move on to some of the other decks. There's obviously plenty of Mew VMAX. Mew VMAX is creeping up in the standings every single time. But good news is there's a dark boy that's right Ooh. around the corner. A little, a little dark otter that oh, we're going to talk about. Oh, a cute little otter with a shell for a nose. So then the second place deck. This looks like the exact same deck as... Um, or pretty similar, yeah. The t- with the two B drills, the Arky. Yep, it's a 4-3... The Sable Drizzile and Tellian. This might be the exact same. I don't think so. List. I don't think he had a Hoopa. But either way, it's... He did have a Hoopa. Oh, did he? No, oh, no, he no, didn't. He no, didn't he didn't. Hoopa. The guy he who... didn't have a Zapdos. Okay, so, I, uh, so I'm It's It's I'm not crazy. exactly the same, but it's a similar build to uh, a couple to our last podcast, what we mentioned, that came second place with the Arceus plus Beedrill. Yeah. So it, it is interesting that we're still seeing the Beedrill. This is the um, the single strike Beedrill, so you get it out without having to evolve it. Using the mustard. Yep, yep. Single strike mustard. Then again, like this is just a, like a super toolbox because you're running the drizzle. Yeah, so yeah. So you just grab. So the game basically, you don't even have to play the game. Basically, yeah. <laughs> when you when you've got, he's just got one Italian. That's interesting. Yep, and it's the shady dealings too, not quick shooting. Yeah. So then uh, another deck I wanted to point out that I thought was really interesting was... Uh, Ar- Malamar? Arceus Malamar. Yeah, yeah buddy, let's dude. go. So Malamar big V. Fan. You're a big fan of the Malamar. Yeah. In, in all metas. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big psychic boy. I, you, I don't think you play... It's for the V-Max here. Max is Jammer. Correct. So 180 damage, that's really good. You're hitting a good spot, especially when you get up to 210 with the belt. Yep, and then you your opponent reveals their hand... And you choose a card that they got to put back Correct. in the deck. To put, so it only goes to the deck. It's not discard. But you get to physically manipulate, and it's not random. No, you get like to Like Typhlosion pick. V-Star. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's that's good. That's really good. It's you really can take good. a Marnie out of play. Yep. And or, the Malamar V is good, too. The Malamar V is actually really, really useful because it has drag off. So it's a it's a gust, and then it also does 30 damage. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then so brain the shade. new active... 
Okay, yeah. Yep. So you, you you gust somebody, and who you dragged up now takes 30. Okay. So it's pretty legit. And then Brain Shake, uh, 130, and then confuses him. Confusion's always a nice... Uh, See, check this out. He's like really leaning... He's, Sorry, yeah, he's hard leaning into the Jolteon and the memory cap, which is exactly what you and I had talked about. Where's like, if you're gonna run it, you can't just run a one off. You have to actually like lean into it to make sure that it, you get it. Yeah, this is a cool list. Yeah, it's really good. It's actually a super cool list. I kind of want. I don't run like this. the three prof and only one switch, but that's me personally. Yeah, you could definitely maybe, maybe go down to two prof and two switch. Yeah, and then pass to the peak again with Arceus V Star. Yeah, that's really interesting. And Crobat V. And Crobat. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'd have to I'm see it. I, I like this list. Yeah, it's a good I, one. I would try this. It's an expensive deck, but it's fun. Well, I don't have four Arceus V. I have three, but I could put a different. I could put it under Marnie in or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. And then, obviously, as we said... A um, couple of B-drills. Yeah, we got this... Dude, there's a Corviknight deck, and we have no idea what the Corviknight is for. Yeah, because it's not the... So, on the ladder, there's a Corviknight deck right now, but it's using the... Uh, combination of Cheryl mm -hmm. and uh, normally Cheryl heals, but it, you have to discard all the energy. Yeah. And then they use the bronze on with metal transfer to just put them over here. Cheryl, discard nothing because there's nothing on them, then put them right back, and then you're good to go. Free retreat. Uh, you can um, do 240, but you can't attack next turn, but because it has free retreat, you can sort of play around it. Yeah. It's, it's an annoying deck on the ladder for sure, but so when we saw it, we were like, oh, is that what it is? Nope. No, I have no idea what this deck is. It's got a Hoopa. The Pumpkaboo is cool. Liopard. whole bunch of stuff that gets stopped by his own path again. Like, not really sure. Yeah. See, maybe we just maybe we're just bad because we don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's so much path to the peak and so many abilities. But yeah. Were there any other cool decks? But there's a Charizard V Max. Yep. And then in 21st place, obviously, my boy Poncho. Poncho. Yep. Suicune Poncho. Coming in hot, and then we got uh, Arceus Duraludon. Whimsicott yep. again. A couple of whimsies. Yep, this is They this. didn't place very high, but... Uh, this is the same list. Yep, they're still showing up. Yep. Yeah, so uh, pretty interesting. Really, really fun stuff. So um, we are really happy to be able to cover this type of tournament stuff. We love this type of stuff to be able to analyze this. So we've okay. definitely... The, the, the thing about this, same thing with what I said with the Warhammer, mm -hmm. watching this type of stuff or just researching or whatever, oh my gosh, we've been learning so much and we've been getting better because of it. Because we're like, oh, that's a nice trick. I'm not going to copy the whole deck. Sometimes we have. Oh, yeah, I have. We've, I've copied multiple decks just like to, to try it out. Yeah, I the Sylveon. Um, Which I've, you want a tournament with. Yeah. Woo! Let's go. So, uh, you know, it is so much fun. This is one of the funnest things we've ever done in Pokemon in our mm -hmm. lives is yeah. getting into TCG and competitive and stuff. So. so one thing before we move on to how we think Astral Radiance is going to affect the meta, Astral Radiance will not be legal... For three weeks. Correct. Same thing online. You can't play in an online tournament with those cards for three weeks. So You have to get people time to practice with them. And, yep, and then acquire the cards. So Vancouver this weekend will it, not have Astral Vancouver Radiance. will still be brilliant stars. Brilliant stars. Yep, yep. All right, so we are going to dive into what we the main believe. Segment? Yeah, what we believe is going to be... The cream of the crop yeah. for Astro Radiance. We've got a couple of spicy, spicy picks, and we're really, really stoked to get into them. We're just going to go refill on some coffee, and we'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned. Oh boy, we are here. Today is the day. It's the official launch of Astral Radiance. We've already spent the past 36 hours buying, selling, trading, uh, all sorts of stuff. And you have already basically built your first rough draft of your Samurott V-Star. Yes. So we've already mentioned like, on the channel what our day one shopping list was. Yours was Samurott V-Star. Yep. And um, I think that was basically it, right? You just had that and Starmies. Oh, and Starmies. Starmie v. Draw yep. the, the Palkia Starmie build, yep. which Pal unfortunately for you, those are the two most expensive g decks right now. The the Palkia Samurai. and the Samurai. Yeah, yeah. So. You see, I know how to choose them. Dude. I know how to choose them. I know man. I can recognize talent. Yep. when I see it. Yep. 
So I got really, really fortunate. I ended up, out of the big packs that I got, I got all four of my Lily Gant Vs mm -hmm. just out of pulling packs. Mm -hmm. Woo! We're in this, baby! Mm -hmm. So obviously, I the the two big things on my shopping list was Lily Gant V-Star, uh, Gardenia's Vigor, and all that stuff to do my new and improved grass deck or decks. Because yep. I'm the grass leader. And then the secondary, because my favorite of the three Hisuian starters was actually... Uh, the Typhlosion. I'm yes. a huge Typhlosion fan, uh, especially when I draw them. I draw them on all fours, and it looks way better. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, I'm usually, yeah, hey, sometimes you just got to keep them quadrupedo, man. Dude. Sprigatito better be on four legs, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh, no, he's definitely standing up. I'm gonna oh, you, I'm going to be so sad. And he's going to be, oh, he's going to We'll bet a taco on it. We'll right. bet a taco. Yeah, all right, bet a taco. You guys are seeing this. We're shaking hands for people that can only hear us on the podcast. Yep, yep. He's standing up, betting a taco on We're it. Betting a taco, he's on four legs. What if he comes out with, like, six legs? Um, then no one wins. Wow. Well, I'm betting he's on four legs specifically, not any more or less than four. You guys let us know if he's got six legs oh, and God. standing on all six of them, who wins? Then Melissa has to make us cake pops. Yeah. All right, let's shake on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so let's get into this. Obviously, so I I was very fortunate. You have your first out of two wish list done, basically, in terms of you have a rough draft. What is it, a 3-2? Yeah, I got 3-2 Samurai. 3-2 Samurai right now. Really good start for the first two days. Yes. Or for the first day, basically. Yep. Right, because we're recording this on Thursday. So yep. Yep. for just Wednesday, you already have your Samurai. Like, you you want to have a 4-3 eventually but i'm not gonna trade away all my packs just not for, yet yet you know and you have a whole bunch that you're gonna open tomorrow in game you have 50 you're, you might draw one exactly so just we're playing patient but for the first day having a three two is primo that's so good how do you feel good because i uh, i also got my starmies you did, you did. Yeah, you got, got some Starmies. I got a pair of Starmies. No, uh, the, not, not just Starmies. Not just Starmies. Misty's Starmie oh, B, baby. Oh, baby, the yeah. beautiful one chilling in the lazy river. I'm a Kanto guy, so I had to have it. So, yeah, basically what we're going to talk about here for us, we've done an Astro Radiance episode already. We've done a couple videos on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have at least one episode, if not two, talking about it on Spotify, mm -hmm. uh, where you can listen to our podcast here. But today, now that it's out and we've built a couple decks, uh, I have been able to knock both of my day one lists out. Yes. So I'm very, very pleased. I have everything I need for my Lilligant decks, uh, and I have basically everything. I would like a third. Right now I own, because of packs. I actually own five Typhlosion Vs. Yeah. So you're getting one. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> uh, and then I own two of the V-Stars. I would like to own a third one. Just haven't got one yet. Right. But right. so far, having a, f a four to technically five, but a a f being able to run a four two is still not bad. Right. That's what people do with Arceus all the time. So, like, you can definitely make that work. Typhlosion's really cool. It can spread damage any way you like. It's at that 180 mark. Yes. It's a psychic type. It has a no the V has a no cost insta burn. Um, there's a lot. And then obviously, it's V star attack. Uh, if the opponent's active has exactly four damage counters knock it out so yep. like we're really really happy here uh with what we've been able to accomplish in the first day so we're just going to get in here and talk about what we predict or what we think will be sort of like those s tier picks in the meta for best cards yeah best the best builds best builds yep so the first one we're going to talk about we're just going to dive right into it Lilligant v and v star let's start with the v yeah so the hisuian Lilligant v uh, it's fighting and grass type, so obviously we just have a green card here, really nice. And we have dance gracefully. So it's basically like our beaver fever pseudo thing. So no energy mm -hmm. draw until you have six in your hand. And obviously it would end your turn because it's an attack, but that's still great. That's pretty awesome. It's like, And then leaf step for 130 is not bad. It's not bad. You would almost never use that. You, you know what I Correct. mean? Correct. You, you want that V-star on the board. Um, so we will hop right over to the V-Star. I don't think there's much more to say about Lillian. And I am running a 4-3. Okay. So this is where the big oomph is. So parallel spin, you see 130, you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. Cool. But you have the choice when you attack to click yes or no, just like when you play Crobat. Yep. And basically, if you click yes, you can move an energy from Lillian V-Star to your hand add an extra 100 damage. So now you're at 230. With a choice belt, you're at 260. 
And with our combo, with using the old Flapple Apple Drop, uh, now you're at 280, and you're OCOing Arceus V-Star. Yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty important KO to secure. It's a very important KO to secure. So it's, re- but either way, being able to hit for two thirty, regardless, two thirty th- knocks out like every V in 230 the Two thirty is amazing, right? Yeah, and you can just put it back next turn. Yeah, and then obviously the ability that it has—it's not an attack, but the star power, star perfume, Brandon. This one's really insane in practice. So. It's once per game, obviously, because it's the it's the star uh, V star ability. Yep. But you can choose any combo from your deck of green pokes or green energy up to five, and put them in your hand. So just go search for everything you need for that big turn wombo. Insane. It's so good, especially because this is an ability and not a move. This it's is an a, ability. This isn't something that can be stopped with Marnie. Correct. This is you need paths to stop this. So. I know where you're going with this, Justin. Let's talk about... We're going to kind of go out of order because we wanted to talk so about... So why Pokemon. is it so important to be able to get a bunch of energy in your hand? Let's talk about a certain card. We're going to scroll all the way down to the trainers. We were going to do Pokemon and then trainers, but this combo, we got to talk about... Yeah, this is like the first combo here. Right yeah. up top? There it is. Right here, yeah. So this is like day one. Yeah. Yep. So Gardenia's Vigor. Yes. Uh, the reason this is important and so good is going to be... I've run in like three or four of these in every grass deck I've got right now in Astral Radiance. Uh, because it's draw two before you do anything else. You just draw two. Yep. Really good. Yep. Uh, if you drew cards in this way, attach up to two grass energy cards from your hand mm-hmm. to one of your bench Pokemon. It does not specify what type of green energy, and it does not specify what color the Pokemon on your bench has to be. Yeah, so this could go... Very. This could go to your Arceus. This could go to a lot of things. Yep. Uh, it's very, very, very powerful when you combine with perfume because then you get something else set up on the bench. You can get two or three Lilligant set up, so you just boom, 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 and now you have a checkmate, yeah, right? Yeah. We're doing 230, 230, 230. Uh, so it's just really, really powerful. Basically, this is water decks have Melanie. Yes. Grass decks now have Gardenia's Vigor. They work a little bit differently, one from the grave, one from blah, 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 blah. But basically, functionally, in terms of the slot that they take in the, in the deck, they they fit sort of that same role. Yeah. Yeah, Grass overall got a huge overhaul and a huge... Dude, stocks on Grass is up. And, Especially until rotation. And you want, I, I, I had a thought about this. Grass doesn't necessarily fit into the whole... I mean, you can... Like, the, the holy trifecta right now... Well, it's not even a trifecta. So, like, the holy, like, circle... Normal. Of typing is normal, dark, fighting, and psychic. And psychic, right? yep. Grass doesn't really fit in there. Like, yes, you can hit some darks. The good news is it will soon. Because what we were alluding to earlier, we see how we build this up? God, we're so good at this. Yeah. So we're going to go over to now your number one. Mm-hmm. What is really, what, what did we talk about is, is creeping up back in the TCG meta? Mew. Mew, yep. And what beats Mew? Dark. Uh, dark Pokemon. Who just got dropped into the meta, Brandon? Show that boy. Uh, this this little thick boy right here. And before we talk about anything else, what's he weak to? Grass. That's exactly right. So I'm predicting because of everything going on and because this boy's going to be everywhere, Grass will now have a place because there's already a few good dark cards that are weak to Grass in the meta already, mm-hmm. like Moltres. So... Now adding in stuff like this, you're just getting more and more that you're going to be able to hit for super effective or threaten yeah. with super effective. What I find interesting about it is to kind of counterbalance the fact that they don't hit a lot super effective, they decided to let Lilligant V-Star just hit like a truck. Just go super hard. Just destroy any V-card in the format yep. with a base 230 damage. So Exactly. I, I kind of like that balancing there because it's like, okay, you get that a matchup against Electric, this neutral matchup. Well, Grass is, I just slap. Grass is still going to win because they're yep. going to hit for so much damage. So let's, let's talk about this boy. So he has an ability also, but first let's talk about Merciless Blade. Pretty cool name. So for two Dark Energy, super, super cheap. cheap. 110 damage. If your opponent's active Pokemon already has any damage counters on it, it can be one, it can be ten. This attack does 110 more damage. So, so double it to 220. 220 damage. So this this could be a good pairing with Zigzagoon. Yes. Could be a good pairing with 
Quick shooting Italian. Yes. It's going to be a good pairing with uh, Apple Drop Flapple because he doesn't, he takes only colorless energy. So yes. you can yes. pair him with anything. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of, you could pair with the brand new uh, Absol. Mm -hmm. uh, who spreads 10 damage to all opponents' Pokemon, bench or active, for just one Dark Energy. We'll talk about a Stadium card later, too, that can Correct. fit into these. So, let's move on to the V-Star power. Uh, Mooncleave Star. During your turn, you may put four damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Yep. In a vacuum, that's terrible. Yep. That is so bad. But the fact that it is it literally pairs with Merciless Blade. built for his own attack. Correct. When you put... In the grand scheme of things, like, isn't, like, you know what I mean? That's really bad compared to, like, yep. Starbirth, where you just go get two cards that you want. Yes, but the fact that it, it does, so it'll do four da uh, 40 damage. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're versus an Arceus V-Star, so now they're down to 240. Yep. If you have a, if you have, so, and now they've taken damage, so now you're doing 220. Yep. And you put a belt on, now you're doing 250. Mm -hmm. So you can you can do you're actually overkilling by ten, but you can knock out Arceus in one turn with this. Yeah. So that's why it's so good is because it's just a self buffing combo, mm -hmm. and it just allows you to have that one two punch because it's an ability. Then you attack and just pow right yeah. in the kisser. And if you're up against Mew V Max, you just drop that Zigzagoon. You don't even have to use Moon Cleave Star. Correct. Zigzagoon plus. Yeah. It's and you're done deal. It's awesome, and for two energy. Yep. This you don't even need an energy acceleration. I mean, honestly, against Mew, another thing that you could do is just the super effective glasses, and not even worry about if he has damage. You'll just do three hundred and thirty off base. Didn't even think about that. So there's a <laughs> this guy is gonna crush Mew matchups. Yeah, I I'm really liking the place that Asurian Zam Samurai is finding himself in. I think, and I think instead of running path to, the, you could still run path to the peak mm -hmm. to shut down the the Genus Act. But I think a good matchup against the Mew we could talk about now is the Stadium card Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah, that'll be really good to shut down a lot of things in the meta. Let's show off the gold version of it. Yeah, buddy. So Temple of Sinnoh, all special energy attached to Pokemon yours and your opponents will provide colorless energy and have One. no other effect. Oh, one. one. Okay, a one colorless energy. So a good. double turbo only counts as one. I've yep. actually tested this last night. Good catch. Yep. Good catch. Yep, yep. So, so when dude. you have an Arceus, he had to play another... So he it was a double turbo and a water. He was running a water engine, but it yep. was all normal pokes. Mm -hmm. So that way he could Melanie. Um, and he, but it, he had a double turbo and a water, and he couldn't swing. Absolutely insane card. It's really good. because So that shuts down Fusion Strike. That shuts down double... Turbo that shuts down capture that shuts down uh, rapid strike. and single strike. That's so I, good. I play a lot of, of rapid, rapid strike. strike with if this card is in play, you're screwed. This deck is the deck is not playable. Correct. You cannot. You have to tower of waters. Yeah, you have to have. A, you you got to hope they throw this it's down sort of, first. Yeah, the stadium wars is sort of like a weather wars in a way. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of. I love the way that they that they that the card game does this. Like correct, because there's, there's so a nice many give and take. There's so many cool and relevant stadiums and strategies. Mm -hmm. It's like having mm -hmm. all these different like weathers. Correct. Yeah, Temple Sino. I think it's going to be everywhere. I've already been testing it last night, and it's great. It's okay. really really good. This one was on my radar yep. as what you know. I, I don't think a lot of people were talking about it. And they I should think be. This is a game changing card. Oh, absolutely. This is like Path to the Peaks. This it's, is a very meta defining card. Yeah. There's so many special energy right now. And that's one of the reasons why Whimsy does so well. Exactly, Same exact reason. Exactly. So let's move on to the last Pokemon, uh, top tier Pokemon, we should say. And then we'll move on to some other picks. Well, the, yeah, one and two, basically, is the two waters. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Origin Form Palkia V Star. Yep. So this is the new Arceus of the block. So basically, with Fusion Strike, we had Mew with Brilliant Stars. We had Arceus. And now here, with Astral Radiance, we have Origin Form Palkia V Star. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the new uh, big boy in the locker room, so to speak. Yes. This, is the, this is the new sheriff in town. Probably, potentially, mm -hmm. the best card in the set, you'd say? Co oh, definitely the best card in the set. It's definitely the most expensive card in the set. Mm -hmm. And it's probably one of, if not the best I still think that Starbirth is really, really, really good. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one of like top two or three best cards in the game. I think Arceus V Star is the best card in the game. Correct. I I'm leaning that way too. But yeah, let's get into this. So, so, so first of all, before we get into anything, I just want to be like, wow, 
Only two retreat cost and only two energy to attack. What is going on here? Mm -hmm. Super cheap. Let's get into it. So we got Subspace Swell. It's got a base of 60, and it does 20 more damage for each bench Pokemon. So Yours and your opponent. So it's Suicune. Yep. It's Suicune with a higher base. So that's really obviously going to pair very well with Sobble, Drizzile, yep. Yep. Um, things of that nature. But let's talk about Star Portal. Star Portal. So this is the ability that it has. Mm -hmm. So again, Path of the Peak shuts it off. So we got, during your turn, you may attach up to three energy cards from your discard pile to one, or to your water Pokemon, any water Pokemon, right? In any way you like. So it's a super buffed version of Melanie. Yes. Yep. Slash. It's like a, it's like a cross between... Melanie and Arceus. And, and Arce yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's any way you though. like, which is great. You can go to the active, and he doesn't need a whole lot to swing. That's really, really good. I can see this being used... Uh, I'm curious, I haven't watched any videos or anything on like what people are building, but I can see this in a Suicune deck. Yeah, Tricky Jim did it today, and it was basically this with the the Shady Dealings okay. combo. Yeah. Yeah, um... And the V's not bad either. Yeah, yeah, the V, we'll talk about the V for a second. You got Rule the Region, search your deck for a Stadium card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Meh, but... It, it could be, again, we're in a stadium heavy metal right now, so that's good search. Yep, and then Hydro Break. For Very good. For 200 damage for three energies during your next turn, you can't attack. But if you evolve it, yeah, it breaks that. I like this because it gives yes. you it gives you that flexible option because you could play the V-Star up front, and you could have a V on the bench. To swing for 200. Ready for that big swing. You don't even have to evolve the... Yeah, and the, he's knocking out the Arceus Vs yep, yep. with the choice belt, so... Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like this. Uh, obviously, so so those are the three best cards. I think we think those are the, the big those are the big hot picks that you're gonna see people talking about for yeah. sure. Yep. Uh, and then we just want to touch a couple of fan favorites. Obviously, we'll start off with your Starmie. Yeah. So Starmie, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to the trainer gallery. Go down the one now. that you own. Yeah. So where is she? A little bit further, maybe up, up, up. Okay. Well, it's not. Oh, it's not here. Not here. Okay, whatever. We'll show the alt art. Oh, it's... no. Anyways. So, yeah, we got Starmie V. Uh, I, I grabbed two of these. There's a special art with Misty, and I got those are the ones I got, obviously. Yep. Um, Swift and Energy Spiral. Okay. So, Swift, 50 damage, not affected by uh, weakness or whatever. Who Resistance, cares? it just avoids everything. Who cares? Uh, this is what you're playing this card for, Energy Spiral. Uh, this does 50 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So this comes in when you get behind against yes. Arceus V-Star. Correct. Or Calyrex V-Max. Correct. Or... Palkia. Palkia. If you get behind in tempo, this is a really good revenge kill type option. For only two for water energy. For two energies. energy. It's really nice tech piece. Yeah. I mean, 190's Bisquish, but... He's above that 180, which is nice. It means he can live a lot. Well, let's do some, that 10. Let's do some quick math, okay? So there's an Arceus V Star on the board. He there's hits three. There's three, so that's 150 damage. He hits Trinity Nova, drops there's three more. Six. There's 300 damage. 300 damage for two energy. So you put this on the board, and it's not that like that is what an Arceus deck does. You're gonna and probably have even more than six. Probably gonna have up to seven to ten energies on there. You're just doing hundreds of damage with Starmie. It's so good. And this is one of your top ten pairs of all time. So you're yes. just like, yes, baby, I am gonna kill some stuff with Starmie. Yep. Yeah, when you put this, card it's cool on the that board. it's like energy spiral. Like I see what it. That's rapid spin. Yeah, yeah. That's rap. So your rapid spin killing everything, bro. Dude. Yeah. Nothing has more swag than a rapid spin kill. Let's go. <laughs> but, uh, 300 damage. Rapid spin. So when you play this card, when you put this on yeah. board against a deck like that, it's they, really good. They got to think twice. Mm -hmm. They got to think twice. They about they because if they start stacking up to swing mm -hmm. or counter swing, have a backup plan, you'll have this revenge kill and no retreat cost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. We take those. Let's go. Oh, it's just. Oh, I love it. And it's so easy to get set up with things like Melanie. It's easy to get set up with things like uh, Palkia Star Portal. Because, again, it only needs two, which means you still have that extra one to to throw around where you need to. Palkia only takes two. This only takes two. That's a really good place to be. Why does Starmie V have a free retreat cost and Regilecki has a retreat cost of three? I have no idea. Why do you do this, Pokemon? All right, so let's move on. 
Uh, what else do we got? What else we got? So my Typhlosion. 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 Where is he at? Let's find him. Well, you want to talk about this boy? Oh, yeah. So the Radiant cards. Yeah, yeah. So so talk to him about Radiant cards. and. What so these are like the Prism? Yes. They used to be called? Yep. You can only have one of them, and they don't evolve. They're, bas- they're It's a basic Greninja. You don't need the Froakie or Frogadier. Mm-hmm. Really, you're powerful. You can only have one in your deck. One, yeah, one radiant, radiant card. Radiant card. card so you can't deck. you can't have Radiant Heatran and Radiant Correct. Ninja. So Radiant Greninja has concealed cards. Uh, you must discard an energy card from your hand, and which is really great, obviously, in a water deck. Cause Amazing. Sets up for Melanie. Mm-hmm. Sets up for Star Portal. Uh once during your turn, you may draw up to two cards. So again, every turn you just discard an energy, draw two. So it's basically like that old school fire, uh, molten earth or whatever it was called. Scorched earth. Scorched earth. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, you're gonna see that a lot. Um, it also helps with the bench damage for Suicune Correct. decks and stuff like that. Really good. All right, let's talk about Typhlosion. So Typhlosion V Star. Uh, this one's pretty sick. So the V is pretty cool. He has a, an attack that has no energy cost, and it just point-click burns. So mm-hmm. pretty nice. Uh, and then the other one is for three energy, does 120, and then it randomly puts a card from your opponent's hand back into the deck. I get to see what it is, but I don't get to choose. Like you show it to me after it's randomly chosen. Okay. okay. So, But it is a nice little disruption, and it's 120, so not terrible. Yep. And then Hollow Flame, three energy, 180. So two solid, with, yeah, real solid. So solid. And then uh, put three damage counters on your opponent's bench pokes in any way you like. The reason that that is important is because of Shimmering Star. Uh, so Shimmering Star is his star attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon has exactly four damage counters, mm-hmm. knock it out. Yep. Take pick up your toys, bro. So. That sounds really hard to set up, but you could go one Hollow Flame plus a Zigzagoon. Yeah, plus Zigzagoon, or again, if you're fighting something, you just Hollow Flame again and then spread more. So you, oh, yeah, exactly. So what I do is I'll spread t- 20 here and 10 here, and then next turn I'll flip-flop it, 20 here and 10 20 here. and ten here. Yep, yep. So that way they're at any point in time a Zigzagoon can get dropped, or at any point in time if I Hollow Flame again, you could then just drop 20-20. Yep. And 10 10, but I like spreading it and playing mind games because then they don't have a good option as terms of who to switch in. You can get damage counters on things with the burn. There's a lot of good plays here, but anyways, being able to you could actually even build a deck where we pair it with your Samurai, yeah, that's but true. we can't do both V stars, so that's true. That's the problem, yeah. I think this is gonna be a little harder to set up, but do it, yeah. It's fun to play, it's super. This doable. is the what I was practicing with last night. It's fun. It just it's it's definitely not like the S tier in the meta. Yeah, exactly. When there's other things running around that are really important. But it's also really good because I teched in a uh, yoga loop. So oh, that's an instant okay, yep. point click and deal twenty. Yeah. So who else were we going to talk about? Uh, I think it's fair to mention Decidueye just to cover all the starters. Yeah, let's do it. <coughs> All right, so we got Hisuian, Hisuian Decidueye V Star. What's the first thing you see before you even get in here? Uh, 160 damage for three energy. But what about those three energy? Uh, double turbo. There it is. Exactly. And he's and, a bit bulkier. Yeah, 270. 270 for that. What we would think is like a squishy owl. Exactly. So not bad. So somersault feathers. It, it is double turbo a bull. Mm-hmm. What do we get? Uh, you may discard up to three energy cards from your hand. Up to three. The attack does 30 more for each card you discard in this way. So, you're not gonna, terrible. It, you're going to be running a lot more like energy heavy, but there's also a bunch of new stuff that we've already talked about on the channel, like Grant, yeah. and then, which will do more damage. Um, and then also the Pickaxe. Yeah. To be able to fish out energy is really, really good. And you'll be using... Um, what is that card... It's like energy special. I don't know. It, it it puts five fighting energies back in your deck. It's an item card. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So that's how you'll run one or two of those. Um, and then you got the V-Star Power, Star of Fortune. During your turn, you may draw cards until you have eight cards in your hand. So that's how you're going to get those energy cards. Exactly. So it's like a super 
uh, it's like Cynthia's ambition when after he knocked out type of thing. Exactly. So it's a really good yep. once per game ability. It's not the best, but it is good. And because it is be you know it is fighting, you're doing super effective. So you don't necessarily even need to no discard energy in certain matchups. You know, even with the double turbo, so dropping that down to 140. Doubling that to 280, you're one-shotting an Arceus V-Star. So you're all, so it's really actually in a good spot. Yeah, it's just not as strong as some of Correct. the other options out there. Correct. But yeah, I but mean, it is legit. It's a cool card. Mm -hmm. It'll it'll see some you'll see some fun stuff with it. All right, what? And else then Miltank. Miltank. Yep. Where is Miltank? Right up above the bird. Right on the edge. There yeah, Miltank. Go. So this... This is the new boogeyman. This is... Yeah. So We've already been talking about Decidueye on the ladder. Now this is... They've given us another one that doesn't have to evolve once or twice. <laughs> yeah, so this, this... It does a lot less damage. Um, but yeah, you're going to start seeing... You're going to see some, like, stall decks and stuff like that. You'll probably yeah. see this with Dunsparce. Yep, Miracle Body. Uh, you'll see, like, healing cards of this, yep. too. You'll see, like, the cheese and the fresh water set to... Um, it does not do Cheryl's a lot of care. damage. Yeah. It doesn't do any damage, basically. It's just a tank to sit there and stall till you build up your, your bench. Uh, but there's a lot of ways you could do this. Like, you could be... You, this would be a great deck to use with Gardenia's Vigor. Mm -hmm. Put this out, stall out your opponent while you use a couple of Gardenias and set up stuff on your bench. Yeah. So... Um, just as an option here, you could also do that with Melanie. You can do that with uh, Magma Basin. There's a lot of things that we can accelerate energy right now while Mill Tank stalls. Yeah. So just keep your eyes out for Mill Tank. It's going to be blocking damage from all your Pokemon. V. And if you don't have anything that can, if you don't have a, a single prized attacker, you just lose. Exactly. Yeah. So you can't you can't roll out with. You know, just V's and V Max or whatever V's and V Stars. Yep. So yeah, that's those are our you know big primo picks for like Pokemon and stuff. Let's talk about some trainers. So as we just talked about Mill Tank, let's talk about the Canceling Cologne. Yes. Okay. So Canceling Cologne. So this will be a fun tech. This is going to be an item card. There's so many of these. I got like twelve. Yeah. Uh, until the end of your turn, your opponent's active Pokemon has no abilities. So it shuts off that Decidueye. It shuts off the Duraludon. It shuts off that Mill Tank, and then you can just pop it. Yep, yep. It shuts down. Yeah, you said you said Duraludon. Uh, perfect example. So, uh, if you're ha if you're getting walled out by something, Glaceon V Max. Glaceon V Max. That's another good one. Yep. yep. You can hit canceling Cologne. Correct. I think this. If you have enough room in your deck, like definitely. This is a luxury pick, but for some decks, it's a luxury pick. But it's also one of those things where it's like if you don't want to have to invest in a single prize attackers. You need a couple of these. You, you, then this is the then this is the other option where you just maybe tech in like two of these. Exactly. Boom, you're done. Yep. So that'll be uh, that'll be a really interesting card. I think that will see a little bit of play. And let's talk about one of your new favorite items. Right next row down, first one. Dark patch, baby, it's back. So obviously, you know, being the big Samurai guy here, day one Samurai was your uh, go to build. That was what your shopping list was. So yep. dark patch obviously goes right with it. Yep. So dark patch. Uh, attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your benched dark Pokemon. So this is Metal Saucer, but for dark. Exactly. Perfect. That's literally so the good. same thing. So, 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 so good. And because you only need two, like, mm -hmm. uh, two energy, excuse me, for your V-Star, it's really powerful to just be able to, like, patch back up. It allows you to retreat. Yeah. Yeah. And throw some away without worrying about it necessarily. Mm -hmm. And you don't, ne maybe not necessarily need to lean into the hiding energy if you're worried about... Uh, like Temple, yeah, because he needs too dark. He doesn't do anything with a white energy. So, yep, and um, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. You're gonna see um, lost my trainers out there. Are you good? Yeah, yep. you're you're gonna see this in a lot of. Uh, this is a reprint, actually. Like, yes, I guess this hasn't been printed for like a really long time. Yeah, this is an old card that they're basically bringing back. Yep. Oh, but Dark Rye. I was gonna talk. Uh, dark Rye has an attack that. Is basically the more dark energy on the field, this the more damage he does. You're gonna see. Yes, this. you're gonna see that paired with that a lot. Exactly. So you'll see this in a lot of dark decks. This is gonna be a new staple uh, in dark decks. And then we can talk about uh, the other girl in town. We'll go to the Hoenn rep. Where's she at? There she is. Okay. Huge. Huge card here. You're gonna see this all over the place. Do you like Marnie? I don't like being Marnied. Are you guys a fan of N? 
I don't like being end. Imagine if N and Marnie had a love child card. That's Roxanne. Yep. So you can only play this card if your opponent has taken three or uh, or more prize cards. Yep. So if they're halfway to victory. If they're halfway to victory or more, yep. you can play Roxanne. What do you get for Roxanne? This is insane. Ho and rep here, obviously. So if you play Roxanne, you shuffle your hand into your deck and you draw six. If your opponent... Your opponent shuffles their hand to the deck and only draws two. So you're just going to choke them out. Absolutely debilitating card, dude. It's so good. And I drew a full art naturally. Yeah. Oh, I was Did you get reverse so hollows too? I did. So, yeah, I've got one reverse hollow. I've got like 12 or whatever of the regular. And then I got the one of the full art, baby. Ooh. And those trade for like 12 right now. I'm not yeah. getting rid of it. Oh, I, yeah, you hold on to that one. That's a hole in rat, baby. Yeah. That. That's the first gym leader I ever fought in Pokemon. Ever. With that nose passing. <sighs> look out. Yeah, look out for Roxanne. So, another another uh, really good card that we have to mention is the very first one up by Word Deer, Adamant. Uh, this card. Brandon, have you ever heard of a, a card called. Arceus V-Star? I have. I have heard of that. Have you heard of a ability that he has called Star Birth? I, I have. But you can only do it once a game, unfortunately. Oh, okay. That's... Or if there's a way you could do it four times a game. I would like that. Well, let me introduce you to Adamin. <laughs> you can only use this card if you discard two uh, metal energy, silver energy cards from your hand. Mm -hmm. Which, again, Metal Saucer still exists, so... Mm -hmm. Search your deck for up to two cards, put them into your hand, shuffle your deck. So this is a supporter version of of Starbirth. That's what this is, right? Am I missing something here? Well, that's so good, isn't it? The stipulations are a little more correct specific, but but, to, but the fact that it's not limited to once per game is where I'm like super hyped. Yep, yeah. and you know you you can go grab two metal saucers and just go grab those two. Steel energy, steel energy, right whatever, back out, and just put them on your bench. And put them on your bench, so so that you could play three energy in one turn. Solid card. You're gonna really good card. You're gonna see that in uh, you're gonna see that in in steel decks. Oh, absolutely. You want to talk about the bog? Yeah. So, uh, Gabe Chop Bog. This is a card that's gonna go into my Hisuian Samurai, Samurai deck. deck. Whenever either player puts a basic Pokemon from their hand onto their bench, put do two damage counters on it. So only from the hand to the bench. Only from the hand, so no... And only basic. But yeah. that's still really, really good. Yeah, so battle VIP pass. Mm -hmm. They'll be free from that damage. I Correct. Think, what other what other stuff puts it right to the bench? Um, in standard. Oh, in standard, yeah, I'm not sure. Like Nest Ball and Expanded. But yeah, but that doesn't exist here. But yeah, so but it is still really, really good, especially... Oh, call for Family. Call for Family. Yeah. Uh, the new Baskelin. Yeah, yeah, he'll put yeah. them right to the he'll bench. He'll put them right to the bench. So the fact that it's the put the two damage counters, this will power up your Samrot V-Star. Yeah. Because if they have any damage counters, now he's, he doubles his swing. Yep. So he just he just slices him with his Merciless Blade. So this is going to be, you're thinking this is where your head's at? Yeah, I'm going to put at least a couple of these maybe in. Maybe two of these and two temples? Yeah. Or are you thinking about running Hiding Energy, maybe? I'm not sure, because I was thinking Path, too, but... I don't want to shut down you my ability. You don't want to shut down your own. Yeah. And you could also run Crowbat because it's dark. Exactly. So, like, you might just want to run Temple, not run Hiding Energy, and just rely on your Dark Patches and, and uh, Rods. Yeah. I think I think that's the way to go. Might be a good I do way to want go. Hiding Energy, but I don't know if it's really necessary. I think it might be better to shut off everyone else's special and just not rely on the Hiding. Yeah, I think so, too. But, again, really good card here. The Gape. The Gape. Jaw bog. Yeah, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? Uh, Kamado's not bad. Yeah. This is sort of a miniature professor's research. Yeah. But you get to save one. Yeah. So it's kind of cool tech piece. I don't hate this. No, no. It's uh, so you choose choose a card in your hand, hold on to it, discard the rest, and then draw four. And then draw four. So you'll have a hand of five. Yeah. So it's a really interesting. And you get to save something like, oh, I don't want to get, I don't want to get. Like a professor's research on professor's research. I hate that. <laughs> this way, you, if you have a, if you have like a prof and a Kamado, you can just play the Kamado, save the prof, get a new hand, and then next turn you could prof after. There is plays here, and I don't hate it. That's I, all I'm saying. I, I think one of the worst feelings in the world is professors researching away 
a, a professor's, professor's research. I hate that, dude. That's why I like Team Yells. Team Team Yells cheer. Yeah, yeah. The t- the secret tech piece. Um, pickaxe. Pickaxe. Let's talk about the pickaxe because this one you're gonna see in fighting decks. You might even just see it in decks. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. There's no downside here. Yeah, so Gutsy Pickaxe. Reveal the top card of your deck. If that card's a fighting energy, attach it to one of your benched Pokemon. If it's not a fighting energy, just put it in your hand. So either way, it's free draw. You're drawing. Four, you're putting four of these in you're every fighting deck. You're putting four of these deck. in the deck. Exactly, because you can. there's, like you said, there's literally no drawback. Yep. The only only way it's bad is if you have no benched Pokemon, then it clogs your hand. But And the fact that it attaches, too. It's not just like... The fact that it attaches energy, that's yeah. so good, and that's one of the things that... Fighting decks have always struggled with before Rapid Strike and Single Strike was accelerating energy. B mm-hmm. is just not reliable enough. No, no. Like, without... If your if you're fighting Pokemon was not Single or Rapid Strike, it was really hard to accelerate, accelerate that energy without B. Correct. And now Gutsy Pickaxe, and the fact that it's an item. So let's talk about Arida. All right. So th- hey, hey, all right. So before we get into this, I'm going to say right now on the channel... Let's. What are we gonna call her? Are we gonna call her Arida? Arida? What are we gonna call her? Doug Let's... said it was Arida, so I'm going with what he said. Okay. I don't know. All I right. don't know. A PMC is officially calling her Arida from now on. All right, Arida. Let's talk about it. Uh, so basically, this is Valkner for water decks. Yep. So you search your deck for a blue energy and an item card. Reveal them. Put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck. Really, really. Really, really good. Yes. Like, so, so good. Go grab an escape rope. Go grab switch. Go grab a choice belt. Go grab a uh, rod. Go grab quick ball, ultra ball, pal pad. Go grab escape rope. There's so many uses when you build around an energy, or excuse me, an item-based engine. Like if you're building like the Sylveon deck or when Volkner was legal. Go grab a capacious bucket to get To get even energy. more energy. Yeah, yeah. So you can go grab an energy with a bucket to grab three energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, this super awesome. Didn't don't you have a, did you pull a full art of this? Uh Rainbow. Rainbow. Yep. Rainbow. Okay. Solid, solid. Full art rainbow, yeah. And a Kamado also. So what else do we have? We we don't have much else. We've got, uh, the super effective glasses was yeah. the last one on our list. Yep, in terms of men- honorable mentions. Yep. So this is the last one for sure. Uh, this is a new tool card. Uh, when applying weakness to damage from the attacks of Pokemon, this card is attached to. Boy, that is worded really weird. Okay. So basically, when you have a super effective hit, when you hit something for super effective damage, instead of doing times two, times three. It's times three. So this means that with the super effective glasses. Without any damage counters being applied, Samurai V Star can overkill by twenty. Oko a uh, Mu V Max. This could you could potentially you could potentially take choice band choice belt belt out of like a Lucario deck. That's actually what I did. Is is like if I'm normally running like a if I'm if you got a deck with four belts, I'll cut it to three belts and one glasses. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, super useful, and I think that's all the cards we're talking about, man. I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. It's so good. So we've been really hyped so far with what we've got in Astral Radiance. Again, tomorrow, uh, being able to get Brandon's side opened up and get him rolling. We've got a lot of fun stuff on the channel that we've planned. We've already been tweaking our decks. Let's put my boy up here on the yeah. screen while we close. While we close this one, we've off. already been tweaking our decks uh, over the past 24 hours. Um, I specifically, like I said, I've made my uh, Lilligant deck. Mm-hmm. I've made my Typhlosion deck. Um, and then I've also retooled my Zerud from the ground up, and I've retooled the Lucario. Yeah. Retooled Jolteon. And what? There was one more. Um, oh, I retooled Charizard. Okay, okay. And I read to there's one more after that actually because that was just when popped into my head. Um, oh, the the single prizes. So the two different Torterra Owl yeah, combos. So yeah, using yeah. a combination of both the Torterra that came out uh, with Brilliant Stars and the Decidueye, who is like the mill tank that blocks damage but also deals good damage too. Yep. Uh, from V will block da- all damage from V's. So. It's a combo of both out. I've got two different builds. One uses the new Decidueye that if there's any damage counters, it just it deals the 30 damage time for no energy. And then uh, that one is also running with the Apple Drop. Mm-hmm. 
Applin, uh, uh, Flapple. Yep. So deal 20 and then go hit a bunch there. And then the other one is actually utilizing the Cricketune, which will give the Terterra uh, an extra th- uh, 40 health, which will bump him up to 230 for a single prize. And he's dealing, That's and crazy, he's dealing dude. really good damage with Evo Press. Yeah. So both of those decks are really, really fun. Dougie's actually been trying out his version that we've sort of built together. Um, he's got sort of like the third version of that, but again, owl and turtle combo. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed. If you watch this on YouTube, check us out on Spotify, leave a review. If you're listening on Spotify, check out our YouTube channel. And vice versa. Yeah. Do all that stuff. Leave all the reviews. Click Give all the big buttons. Buttons. Hit all the thumbs. Hit leave the one some comments. that goes up. Yeah, leave some comments. We'd love to talk to you guys and interact. Let us know what you think about Astral Radiance, and let us know what is the number one first deck that you're excited to build and play with. So, obviously, mine, Lilligant. Yours, Samurai. Mm-hmm. What is yours down in the comments below? What's the number one, f- day one first deck that you're excited to build out of? Is it just retooling a deck you're already running, or is it a new deck? All right, guys. Well, another good podcast. Good is job, in the buddy. Books. All right, guys. Until next time, I'm Zero. And I'm Justin. Council's adjourned. <laughs>